Hi, I'm Mallory with Let's Make Baskets. We are so excited to have you join us today to weave the basic basket. Before you get started, please take a look at your kit. The list of material in your kit is posted here on the screen. In a couple seconds, it'll be followed by the tool recommendations. These are very helpful while creating your basket. Take a moment and fill your sink or your bathtub with water. You should take the spokes and the weavers and submerge them in water for about 20 minutes before you start weaving. This will ensure that your pieces are flexible while you weave your basket together. You'll notice that you have a couple extra pieces. That's okay, they are in your kit just to make sure you have enough to complete the basket. Let's get started. Today we're making the basic basket. It's a seven by seven square starting and stopping method uh, with seven rows plus the, I'm sorry, with six rows plus the finish. And it's gonna be double lashed at the end. So these are my spokes. There are 14 pieces to make up the seven by seven. They've already been soaking for 20 minutes. So it's, they're ready to begin. Your weavers, I mean, your, all the reed has a right and a wrong side. So you want to be giving it a slight bend and see how the hairs come up on this side. That would be what we call the wrong side. Putting the good side down on your work surface you're going to look for the right and the wrong side on each spoke. There's, there's the hair on that one, so I know that's the wrong side. I want the wrong side up because this is going to end up being the inside of the basket, and you want the nice side of the reed on the outside of your basket in the end. Take a moment and look at the images on your screen. These will help you determine the right side and the wrong side of the reed as you continue to weave your basket. in the end. I've made a cross approximately in the middle of each spoke and I'm going to keep putting the spokes together. I'm going to make seven across and seven, seven vertical, seven horizontal and you can see I'm starting this one sits over and goes under. It's good to get your spokes lined up in a three by three pattern to begin. It locks the spokes into their places and then you build around that. Don't forget to check each one. This piece of reed is very nice. Sometimes it's hard to tell the right and the wrong side, so you just pick whichever you think. Some of them will be more evident than others. So there's the three by three, and it's a nice mat to begin with. I'm gonna to continue to build till I have seven going in each direction, making sure the ends are approximately the same distance. It's a natural material, so there are variations, but they're all manageable. You can see I'm going over, under, over, under. Let's see the pattern begin to develop. Keep going with your weaving until you have seven spokes vertically and seven spokes horizontally. So that's a, a messy start, but all my spokes are where they need to be. I'm seven by seven. And now I'm going to even up the ends. I'll do that first on each side. All right, so all the spokes are in place and we've centered them up end to end. Uh, you're checking the, the spaces here, the squares in the middle. You want them all to be just about the same. There will be movement as you continue to weave the basket, but, but that's the end goal. Our base measurement is about six and a half inches from end spoke to end spoke on both sides. This is a square basket. That's just just a little off. Um, so I'm just gonna make a little space. The basket, as you build it, it will widen and our end size will end up being about an eight by eight. It just naturally will bow out a little. So these, you can see some of the hairy portions of the wrong side. You don't ever wanna pull these. They can end up actually splitting your spoke in half so it's tempting, but just use your clippers 
and clip them off instead of uh, pulling any of the hairs. Here's one, if I were to pull it, it might really give in to the spoke here. So I'm just gonna snip it because uh, sometimes they just bother me hanging around there, so. Yay, your base is complete, congratulations. Now is a great time to take your work and bring it back to the sink or the bathtub and re-wet it and also put the rim and the lashing into the bathtub to start soaking. Make sure you bring your weavers back with you as we're ready to get started on the sides. Um, our next step is uh, you want to make sure your middle spoke here is flat on your surface, unlike this spoke which sits on top of that spoke. With this as my middle spoke, I'm going to start bending them up. You want the spokes to know that they're going to stand in the end and by giving them this gentle bend just up over your finger. You don't ever want to fold it in half and snap them. You want them to know the direction that they're going to uh, rest in in the end. This will help with those first few rows, especially when we start putting on the, the weavers. You go all the way around. You can turn your basket, keep it in front of you. It's always a good idea to keep your working area right in directly in front of you. And I just continue to roll these over my finger, giving them a slight upward bend at their base. Yep, I did this side and now again I'm turning to make sure that my middle spoke is resting on my work surface and not on top of the spoke next to it. We're ready to begin weaving. All right, yep. All right so we're going to begin with our first weaver. Again, you want to know the right side and the wrong side. The wrong side being just a little furrier than the good side. The good side is going to be against you and here's where you pick up that middle spoke that's flat to your work surface and this is how you begin your weaver. You're going to extend it to the end of the next spoke. You want a nice square edge on your weaver. If for some reason it's at a slant, trim it straight, put it there and it's in front of that spoke but you don't have to pick it up it's holding this one right up straight it's in front and my clips I'm gonna clip it right here and I'm just gonna start putting it in front of and behind each spoke I'm gonna keep my work right in front of me and on the corners wrap around this spoke is up that one's down this spoke is up. It's got that gentle bend in it. And I'm putting my weaver right where I want it to be. You want to make sure you're still picking up your spokes. Uh, the ones that are flat on from your work surface are the ones that you should be behind. Checking every spoke. I was behind that one. I'm in front. This is a spoke flat from my work surface, so I know I need to be behind that one. I'm pinching it. This one can stay down until the next row. Here's my next spoke. I'm standing them right up straight. They'll want to bow, but this is where we want them. We want them to get used to their final position in the basket, even if we have to uh, go back and adjust them as the rows go on. You can see how this spoke has slid out a little on this end. I'm just going to slide it in, make sure my squares are the same space. And I'm standing up that spoke on the corner, making sure I don't leave too much of my weaver on the corner. Just keep it right in place as I go along, lifting each spoke off of my work surface, putting the weaver behind it. As you approach where you started, um, your, you want your weaver to be the length of four spokes. So you can see right here is where they meet. That's your first spoke. 
This is your second, your third, and there's your fourth spoke. I want to trim my weaver to the far end of that fourth spoke. They will overlap for four spokes. All right, so right here, trimming. And then uh, on these overlap ends, you want to reverse them. You want to put the finishing end tucked on the inside so that that end is hidden behind the spoke. Trim it just a little bit more. And you can see as this spoke goes up, it's going to hide that end behind that spoke. Here is a closer look at what it looks like when you flip the weavers in reverse. I'm going to pinch them all together. I'm ready to do my second row. I'm going to give the basket a one quarter turn. You want to start and stop your weavers in all different sides of the basket so it doesn't get heavy on one side with all of the double ends. I've got my second weaver. I'm going to remember to check for right and wrong side. I'm going to remove this clip. It's in my way right now but they are helpful. And now I want my weaver behind the spoke uh, that is still uh, naturally laying down. We're gonna stand it up. You put your weaver behind it and extend it over to the spoke to the left. So you're giving it a nice, strong backbone. And then you just want to get your weaver in front of and behind each spoke. Keep your weaver very close. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. Do each spoke individually and stand the spoke up again. You want to, you want to be showing it its final resting place every time you weave it and handle it. Going around the corner, now that you have two rows in, I find it's helpful to clip the top ends of the corner spokes, it just helps the basket to start taking shape. Back to my weaver, and I'm firmly putting it uh, behind and then in front of each spoke. And I'm pushing it down. It's resting right on top of our first row. If you want to use more clips, there's no right or wrong number. I don't think you need one on every spoke, but every few spokes is helpful just to hold that weaver in place. The first three rows are the hardest to, to get going. Stick with it. Keep weaving, keep going until you get those three rows and, and then it magically gets so much easier. But keep wrestling with your reed. There's another corner I wanna clip. Clip them up high so you don't split the reed below. And you can even pick up your basket and look at the side view just to make sure you like where it's going. Your spokes remain vertical. And continue in and out. You should be opposite the placement of the weaver below. Coming to another corner. This is, this is a little tricky. This is where the start stop area is from the first row. So you're going to try to hold those in place while you take the clip off and get your weaver right in place. You can see this is where that first one starts overlapping. You just weave right on top of it like it's 
Like they're just standing on each other's shoulders. See, you can see that end. I just tucked it in a little better. I'm putting my weaver around as we come to another corner. Stand up my spokes like I want them to be in the end. As we approach where we started, on this side, you can see there's the beginning. It's overhanging that spoke a little. I'm going to just trim a little bit of that edge off. I don't want it to be peeking out. But here's your one, two, three, four spokes. Long. I can trim my weaver right here to hide behind. So I know that's the right length to the far end of that spoke. And now I'm going to reverse. I'm going to make sure that the end that we're just finishing with gets tucked behind the starting point. And that hides both ends of our weaver. You can't see that it started there. And it'll be the same on the inside. There's no ends showing. From this angle, you can see it's a double weaver, but that hides itself as the rows keep piling. So that looks great. That's a great start. Now I just turn my basket one more quarter. We have a fresh side without any starting and stopping ends. Time for weaver number three. Here's an image of what your basket probably looks like after the second row is completed. If it's a little bit floppier, hang in there. It'll get easier and it will start taking shape after the third row. Now is a great time to take a look at your basket and make sure there aren't any weaving mistakes. Every weaver should go in and out and around the spokes and then the row above them should be the exact opposite. If you find a mistake, it's okay. We've all been there. Take a minute and look at the weaver and pull it out slowly back around the spokes. Once you get to the mistake, just start reweaving the correct way and you'll be caught up in no time. We turn to the third side, pick up the third weaver, check for inside outside or hairy and clear. And you just lay it in opposite of its most immediate last row. The weaver is behind this spoke, so I want it to be in front of this spoke, and I'm sliding the end over to the spoke to the left to tuck in the end. Then I'm just putting it inside and outside each spoke. I just removed the corner clip so I can properly weave around them, but I'm going to clip it back together once I'm past it to assist with the shape. I'm taking some time and making sure my spokes are vertical and that they're, the weavers are close together. Put it right in. See how slanted that is? Just bring it back up to vertical. You'll do that over and over as you go around and around. They all want to flow in the direction of the weave. So you just correct it. I'm getting to a corner. Take out the corner clip. Weave my weaver around the two on the corner bringing the spokes back up to vertical, clipping them again if that's helpful, pushing down my weavers to sit tightly on top of each other, slight gentle tug on the spoke to bring it up tight and keep it nice and vertical.
next corner. Unclip, lay that weaver right in place. Clip your corner back together. Got some space there. I'm just pushing it down, pushing the weavers down, pushing the spokes, pulling the spokes slightly up. up. You can see we're passing our start and end from row two. I'm going to give that weaver a little trim right now while we're right here because I know that it is going to stick out just a little. Just trimming off a little, tucking it right back under. I don't want to see the ends, and that gives it a, a nicer finish. Once you get past a row, it's very hard to, to finely trim any of the ends that you see. So take the time to do that if that happens. I'm going to come into the next corner. I'm going to take out my corner clip. Right around the corner, right where I want my weaver to be. I'm approaching my starting and stopping side. You can see it's tucked behind here, so I know this is my first spoke. Two, three, four. I want to trim my weaver at the far end of the fourth spoke. And then tuck it in in the proper weave pattern and then reverse them. Where you started should be tucked behind the weaver's end. I'm going to trim this just a little more and slide it right down behind. And there you go, your ends are hidden. I take another little bit off of this end. You're finished, and there you go. Now I can either continue to clip my corners or this basket is coming up nicely. So there it is. There's three rows. Really locks it in. You're in good shape from here on in. You'll find the rest of the weavers are just going to lie right in place very nicely. So take the time to get those first three rows in place without too much space the nice overlaps, the ends hidden, and you're ready to continue. You've just got three more to go. As you continue to weave, don't forget to take a look at the weaver and determine the right side and the wrong side before you begin. Go ahead and do another quarter turn and start your fourth row. Complete your fourth, fifth, and sixth rows of weavers and then check back in for the rim row completion. All right, so this is what your basket looks like after finishing the other three rows of the 3 8 inch weavers. This basket has a half inch finish row, so you're going to find three pieces in your kits of slightly wider reed. They're half inch wide. Same procedure as before, look for the hairy side and the smooth side. You want the smooth side on the outside of the basket uh, closest to you. So you can see as we lay it in next to the weaver, it's just slightly wider than that. It's just going to give the finish row a little extra depth. But you're weaving it in exactly the same. Inside, outside, right around. And 
standing my spokes up one more time, making sure they're vertical and snug. All the way around. And here I'm back to overlap. One, two, three, four. You don't usually overlap going through a corner on a square basket. It just adds extra bulk. So I could actually trim this just on the inside of that fourth spoke. You bring it behind the starting point, you reverse them, and they hide. That's the way you hide both ends. Tuck it down into place. You see the color on this reed? Often there's uh, different colors, adds character to the basket. It's not a flaw. They just they're it's a natural product, so there's all different tones. I'm pressing down to flatten the basket a little bit, just just ever so slightly squeezing the corners into a, into a little bit of a square shape. You don't have to make it square. You can keep it as round or make it as square as you'd like. And that is your that's your finish row. At this point, you want to take some time and push down all your weavers. See the space? Just a little bit of space there that I found. Go work your way around all four sides. Just making sure your weave is as tight as you want it to be. This is your last chance to, to set those weavers uh, snugly against each other before we go to the next step where we tuck and fold the spokes, finalizing the top edge of the basket. Before we go to the next step, now is a great opportunity to look for any errors in your weaving. Take a moment, correct what you see, and let's get going. All right, so we pushed, we pushed all the rows down. It's nice and tight everywhere. Your spokes are, are vertical. And the next step is to, to finish off the rim. So you can see the spokes, uh, some are out, what I'm gonna call on the outside and some finish on the inside. This next step, you're gonna start trimming off only the spokes that come up on the inside of the basket. You can see this view is from outside the basket looking in. I want to cut off each of the spokes only on the inside. Go all the way around every other spoke, checking twice just before you cut that they are vertical and that you are indeed cutting off the inside only. You should also make sure your basket is always damp. If it's dry at this point, you want to give it a, a little um, time in the water, just another minute or so. It reabsorbs the water very quickly. Does it not like at the beginning when you need 20 minutes from, from dry. Um, but you want to make sure the, the reed stays flexible, malleable, because these outside spokes we're going to bend and secure the rim of the basket on the inside. So unlike our earlier step where we were just bending the spokes around a finger to round the edge, these spokes we're going to give a tight fold directly in half, 
and you're measuring down to uh, a row just inside that you're going to trim your spoke and tuck it under. We're going to tuck it under this row. You can see that it goes well beyond that row. So with my finger, I'm going to mark a spot just below that weaving row, trim this off, you can even trim the corners just slightly just to help it slide under. And with your awl, slightly lift that row and tuck your spoke right underneath your awl. It's going to slide in nice and easy. You guide it with your awl from either side. Hey there! Take a look at the images on your screen to see the proper way to hide the ends beneath the weaver. Now I'm going to turn the basket and go to the next side. You want to finish off these spokes in opposite order, bouncing from one side to the next to pull down that rim and tighten it from opposite directions so it all comes down evenly in the end. Turning this one over and again it's going to go right under this weaver, not your rim row, but the next one down. I want to be able to tuck it right under there and measure with my thumb approximately where I need to trim it. Taking off those corners using my awl to lift and putting the spoke right underneath and sliding it in. Turn again and repeat. Bend it over the rim, measure down with your thumb, trim, take off the corners, get under that row, and put your spoke right underneath. Continue to do that all the way around with every spoke. All right, so all of those outside spokes have been turned and tucked. They're neatly hiding behind uh, the, the row inside. Now you'll notice these uneven ones. It was hard to get them exactly flush when we were cutting them off. These angled clippers are a great tool. You want to you even them up right alongside that top row. These little pieces go flying, so if there's anyone around you, tell them to put on safety glasses. <laughs> um, but just trim down every, every spoke that you trimmed off that was on the inside, nice and flush with that top row. Back to the first side, doesn't take too long. There. This one when I got folded, a couple, couple edges, sharp edges came up. I just trim, trim off those uh, jagged edges. Take this opportunity to, to do that to any of them that, that just, that's the, that reed just poking up. There's one that looks a little jagged as well. Good. We're ready to add our, our rim edges, the inside and the outside row. I'm just pushing down as I square it a little bit. All right, so we're ready to put on the rim rows. It's good to have some clips available. You want to uh, remember your uh, good side and your hairy side. For the inside rim, you want the good side facing outward. You're putting the hairy side up against that last row that we wove.
just starting it. I'm going to clip by each corner, holding it in place. This is a pretty fast step. You just clip, want to clip, put in a few extras, clipping it in place. You want to make sure you've got plenty of material to fully um, cover each side without pulling at the corners. And here you are back at the start. Same rule. We're gonna we're gonna have the um, overlap for four spokes. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna trim it about here. And there's no need to reverse on the inside final row. You're just going to have one end that shows. So just pin it, get your final rim half inch piece, your final rim row. And you want all your ends to end up in the same place on this rim. So unlike other stages where we would turn the basket to start another row on a different side, you do want all the ends in the same place on the rim row. So you can see the rim row ends there and now I'm starting the outside rim in the same place. We're going to pin this, clip it all the way around as well as keeping the inside rim clipped. have plenty on those corners coming around right back to your beginning you can see where it starts we're going to overlap one two three four So at this point we've got the inner rim and the outer rim done and all the ends are in this one location. You want to add your, your round reed, the, the filler for the top. It's helpful to give it just a slight bend the way it's going to lie uh, on top of the basket. Just helps in placement when you get there around the corners. So I'm just going to just going to tuck it behind that clip and then moving forward, just remove my clip, put the round reed in place, and put the clip right back on. Help the round reed to follow the bend in the corner. Just lie it right where you want it to be, between the two rim edges and on top of the finished spokes. Keep your head back. There's a great overlap here, and there is no need for all that overlap. Eventually we want just the two ends to butt up against each other, but I'm going to wait to do a final trimming after I've done my first round of lashing. I am going to trim it so this long end is out of my way, but I'm going to leave that extra so that we can fine tune it as we come back around to that side of the basket. We're ready to begin lashing the basket. You will find uh, the lashing, the smallest piece, the, it's called 3 sixteenths. Again, there's a right side and a, and a hairy side uh, to your lashing. Uh, this one feels pretty good. I'm gonna go with this as my um, good side. You want the good side up. As you find a place, 
just beyond the end of the rim rows. You can see one end is here, one is here. I'm going to go to the very next spoke and slide my lashing with my awl right under those rows, those weavers. I want to go down under two. Oops. And then pick it up, pick up that end that's just emerged, oh. and lift it back up. You want to bend it like a fish hook, just enough to hide it back under that first weaver. Keeping in mind, you're always hiding your ends. Well, I'm going to work at that so that they're piggybacking each other. I want my weaver to the right side of that spoke to save room for when we turn around and come back with the other end. Just trimmed off the edge. It was slightly split. I'm going to put my awl back here and just tuck that end right under that weaver. Oh, it's a little long. Trim it again just a little more. Tuck it and Push that end up and under, piggybacking where you went down. There, that's how you anchor your lashing. We're gonna continue. I need to find the proper end of my lashing without any twisting. Here I am. You are going to lash between each spoke. Right here is our very first one. This is where, this is the spoke that's hiding the back side of the lasher. I'm going to bring that lasher right up and over and in that very first space wrap it around and pull it through. Tightening it right down. And there you go. There's your lashing anchored. You came up, went into that very first hole, you pulled it all the way through, and now I'm going to carefully find the edge of my lashing again, holding it in the direction that it's going to be, it's going to come up and over. So you want to make sure you don't have any twists in the lashing before you push it through. You want this one piece of lashing to last all the way around the basket and we're cross -lash lashing. So we're going to end up going all the way back as well. So you need to handle it very carefully, very gently, not forcing its direction or any twists or turns. See how it comes around without a single twist? I'm going to make sure it's snug. I'm watching my angle of my last lashing. I'm in the very next hole and I'm snugging it down. Let's do one more. Look for the very next hole between the two spokes. Make a little room with my awl. Push my weaver through, ensuring that there, I've not twisted my lashing. And gently pull it all the way through, nice and straight. Get it down small, and then readjust. Pull snugly from your last angle, and Pull down tightly 
and we'll begin to see the lashing angle. There you go. Okay, so I've lashed all the way round, uh, around and I'm back at the side where all our ends are coming together. So I'm, I'm got the rim in my left hand, I'm pinching on my lashing to hold that tightly in place and I just put it through a couple uh, loops. You don't want to loop it too far ahead. But I'm ready to do a finer trim on the filler, the round reed that we're using as a filler. There's no need for it to overlap. So we just want to have it end together, clip them together like that, and they should fall into place. Just take a little bit more. You just want them to lie together. Uh, go back to the lashing, tighten the lashing, and Continue with the, the same angle. You're placing your lashing. I mean, it will naturally come in at an angle, but just, just watch it as well and make sure the angles stay consistent. You can see how it tightened down that first half of the round reed. I'm still going to take just another sliver off as I prepare to do these next few. Just the last few sides, uh, spokes on this side. I'm still making a space with my awl, pulling my lasher through. And you can also see all four ends are coming together. If I take that clip off, everything is, is loosely here. You're, you're flattening it. You're making sure there are no bubbles. You can see how this reed didn't quite end up under that lasher and that's okay. We can trim that at the same angle. It'll lie in there nicely as we put everything in its final place. We just have one more. we get back to right where we started. So I'm fitting everything in. That round reed on top. I'm making sure my two rim rows are flush against each other. And I am using my lashing to tuck those down, keep them in place. There's one. This is the third and final. See again that that this I'm gonna pull out from under my lashing because it's plenty long. It's been tied in for the last three spokes, and I just don't like the way it's gonna fall when I tighten that lashing. Well, See how that's square? I'm going to take it back and square it. Not square it, but angle it against that in that same direction, like that. So we've lashed all the way around, just squaring it a little bit. You only go into each hole, uh, you go into each hole twice. It's time to cross the top and come back and start your way back. If somebody wanted to end it singly here, what would they do? Right here, 
you would go right, see where you're right back inside where you went down and did the fish hook and anchored it, you're doing the same thing right there. You would go down, bring it up, hide it under that one, and you would be done with your single lashing. We're going to return and cross lash all the way back. I like going just two or three at a time. You don't want to get ahead of yourself. And then carefully place your lashing exactly where you want it. The X where they cross on the top. And begin your angle in reverse with your lashing and your X. Another one right on the top. Now you're going to see, catch the other side of that round reed. There's three cross lashings. You're going to continue all the way around back to where you started, where the anchor is. All right, so we've cross lashed all the way back. I'm back at the beginning, in and out of each space between the spokes only twice. And as we come back to the start. All right, so we're coming into our last space between the spokes. I'm going to pull it tight. And this is a quick finish. The way we in the end is actually pull it right up here between the rims. Feed it up. Lashing is tight. I'm pulling tight on the bottom. Slide it up through the rim. And I'm going to trim it right down even with that top layer. Tuck it in and there. Instead of anchoring it, it's fine to go down and anchor if you'd like but that's a quick finish too. I'm going to show you a quick add-on as well. If you'd like to put a handle on the side of your basket, you're going to go down to the bottom and you're going to hide it under two spokes. Slide it in here. Oops. Right over to here. It's an easy add-on. It's a nice detail, but it certainly is not necessary. You bring it up, and you can either make the handle curl out. We're going to go right down under and hide it under a few more. Or you could have it curl inward, which is a little, a little more subtle. So you need to decide at this point, are you curling it out, curling it in? Do you want it tall? Do you want it short? So I'm going to trim it right about here. And feed it up through. So I'm going to pull it out of the bottom and go back down here. Sliding in over these needles. not sliding very easily. We're going all the way down with this one. It's good to hide number two. I 
I like that look. I'm on my third spoke in on each side, so it's going to look nice and even. Now I'm just going to feed it back under these and to the bottom again. trying to give it some space. It's not sliding very easily. I can't really grab that end there. Now I know I want it to come this far. I'm just looking to see where, how high do I like the handle? I think that's, that's about right. Just a little lower. Just a nice little touch. Go back and trim this. Could even trim that a little more. Just tuck it under. You have a nice little handle. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you end up with two handles. Did want to check our ends where we finished lashing. Wanted to make sure, yep, that's tucked in nicely. And they're tucked in on the inside under the lashing well, too. You can't see them, so there you go. One more handle. You have a beautiful basket. And there you have it. There's the second handle. They're flush to the rim. They're the same size. Beautiful. Put your basket down on a hard surface with something heavy on top to dry, and you'll have a nice flat bottom basket. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today and weaving the basic basket. We would love to see your finished baskets. Please post um, and tag us on Instagram at Let's Make Baskets. And you can check out our webpage for more information and other basket kits that are available for you. We have online open studio hours to answer any questions you may have. And those events are available on our website. We can't wait to hang out with you again. See you soon.